Yay. <laughs> Here I am. So, you know, I'm going live. And going live is the last thing that anybody really wants me to do right now, I'm sure. Um, so, you know, I, I didn't mean to leave a cryptic message a few weeks ago about school stuff. But, uh, you know, who's ready to hear about it? But, you know what? Who is ready to hear about it? This is something I'm generally pretty embarrassed about. So, give me a second to really even regroup or group in, you know, regroup before I jump into this. I'm going to take a hit of my vape. But, um, anyway, so school was always very hard for me. Um, I always kind of had issues, you know, with socialization. I have social issues. Um, and, you know, I dealt with them eventually. I started getting used to, like, the school I was in, um, when I lived in West Patterson, um, but even then, it was kind of hard for me, and then I, I bounced from Catholic school to Catholic school for two years, and then I went to a town called Bloomingdale, and that's kind of where a lot, a lot of the problems began. Um, generally a very successful person, generally a really smart person. Um, somehow, I guess when I got to schools in the Bloomingdale school, New Jersey school system, um, I was getting bullied a lot and I started not really succeeding grade wise. I started having really bad grades and, um, I don't know if anybody realizes, but when you have bad grades, sometimes it, it takes a toll on your relationship with your family, um, home life and stuff. So, you know, I mean, as much as like you know I love my parents and everything but you know it wasn't helpful to be called a failure um and that's what I felt like already you know I couldn't keep up with the class and just in general it was just it was just really hard um there were a couple of meaningful teachers here and there along the way but uh you know, no matter how many times my mom reached out to the school, notes, whatever, they, they kind of refused to classify me and my learning disabilities, and, uh, that's something that needs to be thought over, um, and because of that, I've sort of, even though I was successful in music school and everything, I've sort of feel left behind if that makes sense like you know almost like almost asking a question when I say that but I feel I feel left behind I feel like um I'm just learning a lot of things now uh being a homeschool mom and um just in general being a person who's interested in education and um I'm I'm a music teacher too I teach kids I teach kids every day and they they mean a lot to me. Um, sorry to get a little emotional, but you know, um, because I teach kids, I remember a lot about what I went through and I always find it to be very important to not put children through the very same thing I was put through. And this is why I homeschool my son too. Like. I can read from a book and I can teach him to memorize things and I can, you know, give him tests and I have plenty of help, friends and family and I already feel like my son is, is luckier than I am at 10 years old because he's getting the education that I always wanted to have, you know, 
Um, and I always wanted to be really career focused. That was always really important to me too. Um, so anyway, you know, fast forward, like, you know, that was like seventh, eighth grade. I'm talking about like, that was difficult being bullied and being targeted even by staff in the school. That was, it was hard. But like I said, there were some decent teachers along the way. Um, but when I got to high school, Butler high school, um, it caught really really bad um <coughs> it was kind of to the point guys like I hate to be graphic but I don't know if like these guys had crushes on me or or what the situation really was but I was getting kicked and beat up like all the time by guys that were three times my size I'm five foot three at the time I was like 120 pounds I'm a little bit more now but I was getting kicked and beaten up by like football players that were like juniors in high school and you know I was being threatened by people that were like juniors in, in high school as well and I, I you know I I never really got to I never really stood up for myself it, it was it was really difficult um there were a few times where you know friends helped me went down to the guidance office with me and stuff but those guidance counselors didn't really help either. One time somebody started like this nasty rumor and the nasty rumor kind of followed me. I don't even, I still don't even know who started the rumor, but the rumor followed me to the point where like, I didn't have lab partners. I didn't have anybody to sit with me at the lunch table. Thank God I had, I had one friend really that was loyal to me. Um, you know, kids can be cruel and it's some, something that people need to think about. Um, the rumor was so embarrassing, like it's almost hard to bring up now. Um, it wasn't true. I don't know. I think I'll just say it. So, so this this um, rumor went around the school. It was, um, they, th these kids said that I masturbated with my mom. So, you know, it actually, like, I never did anything like that. I'm not attracted to my mom. I'm not attracted to anybody, like, in my family. <laughs> you know, that's just, I think, normal. Like, you know, I'm a normal human being. Um, but it affected me to the point where people were like screaming ill at me and I people didn't want to be seen with me. I, I couldn't even get a boyfriend that wanted to be seen with me. And another thing I have to reiterate is that nothing weird was going on in my home. So fast forward a couple days of this rumor going around the school. It's so humiliating. This guidance counselor calls me down to the office. And like, you know, he's looking at his computer screen and looking at me and he's like, well, you know, I have, you know, I'm sorry to like call you down, but I have to ask this question. And then like, he, he's, he like looks at me and he like smirks and he's like, do you masturbate with your mom? And he's like laughing at me. I mean, you know, by today's standards, like that almost feels like sexual harassment or something. I, I don't know. I don't really know what to call it. What I can say is as embarrassing as it is to admit that this is what has been affecting me and giving me social anxiety and messing with a lot of my social relationships in general, like, I, I'd be lying to myself if I didn't say that this has truly been a weight on my shoulders for a long time. And based on the fact that I couldn't get any partners to work with me and based on the fact that I was very sickly as well I had still do but I had a lot of health problems and I still do have a lot of health problems it's not easy to live like this to be honest but I do um you know I just I was even looking at my I was looking over at my grades the other day and it's like how how did I make it through life? 
the 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 grades were horrible. I I could share my report card online. I mean, maybe I should along with this video, and maybe it'll just make me look stupid. But you know, it also shows that when I went to other schools to get help, uh, different tutoring classes, it also shows I got A's and fucking B's. So what does that say? To me, that says that the school system was fucked up. And, um, it, it wasn't completely me, you know, it was, you know, I, I, I have friends that have some stories even for me, um, and they basically have said, thank you, John, thank you for telling me I'm awesome, that's sweet of you, but basically, you know, they just... I lost my train of thought for two seconds just because I'm taking a compliment, but I'm actually taking it in because I kind of need it. But, you know, it even affected, like, gym class. Like, you know, like, you're getting kicked and beat up when you're playing, you know, soccer in gym class. Um, you know, and it's because of a, a stupid lie, a stupid rumor that went around the school. It just wasn't really fair. No. So, with that being said, it's affected my life a lot. My grades were shit. I could post my grades, but I don't know if I will. I do, it does show that I succeeded in other places. And, um, I did have an amazing music education. And, um, it certainly doesn't affect, my, my grades back then certainly does not affect my career now. Um, but I can tell, based on, like what I coped with. I have some kind of disability. Um, it's maybe undiagnosed. But it's def I definitely have PTSD. I mean, that's diagnosed. Um, but I, I have some kind of disability. It feels like some type of learning disability. But I'm willing to accept, finally, now that I'm 38 years old, that I have something a little wrong with me. And my social skills are a little off. And I can really only attribute it to that trauma in the school. Um, and with that being said, like, I, you know, I'm coming forward and I hope a lot of people get to see this. Um, and I hope that, like, maybe one day, you know, you guys or anybody who, you know, hears the story can feel like maybe at least they can come to some kind of form of acceptance. Like, it's okay to have a disability. It's okay that you've been bullied in life. It's okay to admit it. It's okay to talk about it. Um, and um, the one thing that's important to remember is that it is brave to talk about the stuff, like, you know, whatever it is that's on your mind, weighing on your shoulders, whatever. Um, you know, it's okay to talk about this stuff. With that being said, I'm just gonna give you like a long synopsis of like the rest of the shit I've dealt with at this at a school. I've had a really successful career as a music teacher. COVID kind of fucked that up though. I need to get more clientele now. I'm not gonna lie, like you know. And I do some work um, for some major bands in the industry. Um, so that is something I'm really, really proud of. Um, my musical accomplishments are also something I'm very proud of. Um, I, I do confidently feel I have talent. Um, with that being said, even breaking out and being an artist here in New Jersey it's oh it's been I know I talk about it a lot it's been really hard here on the New Jersey heavy metal scene in general and just New Jersey people in general are kind of I'm sorry New, New Jersey but like you know maybe it's, I don't mean like my friends and the people that I love the most I just mean like you know in general like there's a lot of narcissists here and a lot of people that are just full of themselves and you know, out for all the wrong shit, and with that being said, you know, I wrote a, um, like a blog, uh, you know, 
a few years ago that basically touched on some of the nonsense and drama that I went through on the New Jersey metal scene. Um, what I do want to say about that is that, like, you know, life, people aren't perfect, right? Like, life isn't perfect. But I think because of my social problems and social anxiety and disorders, maybe I've been misunderstood pretty deeply. Um, so long story short, the New Jersey metal scene ha was really good to me initially. Um, you know, my last band before Order of the Rose and Spiritual Sickness and all that, like my last band was really cool. Um, and it started out really organically and nice and unfortunately, like for me, it was shrouded in a lot of bullshit and nonsense. And my ex-husband was like trying to kill me for being in a band and that was horrible. Like I just kept getting beat over the head for being in the band and. <coughs> <laughs> I think it kind of affected, you know, my communication with that band a little bit. And, you know, by the time I was, like, done with all of that, like, I was pretty desperate to find friends and find a new boyfriend and everything. And, you know, with that being said, you know, I kind of ended up dating somebody that was kind of prominent in, on the New Jersey metal scene. And maybe sometimes I was a little annoying you know, like, sure, maybe a little clingy because I loved him. But, I mean, I think you see, like, the look on my face, like, I... I feel really sad about all that stuff. Um, I had all the best of intentions. I don't think people saw what my intentions were. Uh... But, like, you know, I kind of, I, what ended up happening was I, you know, I called somebody out for sticking his stupid hand down my shirt. Like, some guy that wasn't my boyfriend, some, some guy that's not even around anymore, to be honest. He, he passed away, so, I mean. <laughs> I'm tearing up a little bit, but I'm hiding it, so sorry I'm blowing my nose. <laughs> But, like, you know, I, I spoke up about it, but maybe I spoke up about it only to a couple of people that were in the circle when it happened and then a little bit too late about about it. But not too, not, like, overly late. I just... So, anyway... <sighs> this guy died and then there was, like, this tribute show that was going to be happening for this guy and... My ex-boyfriend at the time was going to be like a co-headliner for the show and it really bothered me and, you know, I was, God, I don't even really know how much I can talk about it, but I was really, really hurt by it and it, it did cause kind of a little bit of an argument and... So I was like pregnant and like it caused the whole argument caused a miscarriage and that's what happened to me. So I stopped doing music for a while and I started to try to get to get my life together and I let I was no longer in that band and I never got closure with that band because the guy the guitarist that led the band never even talked to me about it. And, uh, that, that still hurts, because he was my best friend. And he didn't even say anything to me about it, so, like, you know, he didn't, he just blocked me, and that was it, so that really sucked. Um, but even so, I kind of just got up off my ass, and... I started working for professional bands, like real professional bands, helping them with social media and other things. And um, that was that was probably the best time in my life. And then I tried to, I got you know my new boyfriend Dave, and we started a band, um, an Ice Earth tribute band, and we were all really happy doing that. And
you know. I don't know. Then there was just drama there, too, because I guess I kind of feel like because of what happened in my last band, there's like some preconceived bullshit about me. And what can you really do about it? Like, I can't I can't do anything other than, you know, try to feel confident that I know that I didn't do anything wrong, you know. Um... So I kind of feel like there's like some preconceived stuff and I don't know. My boyfriend joined this other band and they kind of knew people in my current band and my boyfriend and I did not have a great day one of these recently and I don't know, you know, people get judgy, I guess. Like, we didn't even, the thing is, like, I don't know. I don't even really know what to say about it, other than once my boyfriend got involved with this other band, like, all this weird drama ensued, and I feel like there's some preconceived stuff going on about me on the New Jersey metal scene that I can't really describe, but other than... Look, I've been through a lot, man. I'm not trying to turn anybody off by talking about it. But I think because I've had such bullying and such disabilities, I kind of stick around in situations that I shouldn't for, for so long, for too long. And I'm not even talking about that in my current relationship. I just think some of my past situations have carried on into this new situation. And it's really a shame. Um... All I want to do is do music again. Um, I never let my problems carry on into my bands. Uh, I just feel like people go and talk shit and then it gets carried on into my bands. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm hurting a lot tonight and I'm hurting a lot all the time because I'm coping with a disability and I just think I'm mostly misunderstood, you know? And, you know, I don't want to say too much about people because I don't know what the hell is going through everybody's heads, but I'm not as bad as people think I am. I'm pretty damn nice, honestly, and if you give me a chance... I don't know. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. Otherwise, fuck off. Love you. Have a good night, guys.